Hey everyone, welcome to another video from CardboardEast.com. My name's Jay. I play Asian board games and share what I find with all of you. Today, we're going to be talking about the three little wolves. History. This is actually the third version of Three Little Wolves. The first version came out last year during the 150 board game event in Taipei. If you haven't been following me on social media, then you probably don't know what the 150 board gaming event is. Essentially, it's an annual event in Taipei, and designers, uh, both experienced and inexperienced, uh, will design a board game and sell it to the public for 150 NT, which is roughly $5. 5 US dollars. And the whole idea of this event is to take a game and strip it down to the bare essentials. And a lot of people come to this. So you have gamers, you have like just college students because it's on a college campus. And you also have publishers that come that look for new games uh, to sign. The second version of this game came out at the annual Moonlight Festival in Kaohsiung, the second largest city in Taiwan on the southern part of the island. They call it Moonlight because there's a 24-hour gaming room where people can actually go and play games all night long and camp there with actual tents. I don't recommend doing it. Now, this is the third, but not yet final version of this game. There will be a fourth edition coming out soon that will be produced by Renegade Games, and they'll have a different uh, box cover. Whether or not the insides are different or not, well, I don't know yet. But let's... Uh, Crack it open and see what's inside. Hey guys, this is Future J. Uh, there was a problem with the microphone, so this is me doing a voiceover, so you'll have to deal with my uh, sexy voice. Right away, you'll see there's two rule books, English and Chinese. Uh, they use the fold out map method. I'm not particularly a big fan of this, but it works and gets the job done. Uh, everything was pretty clear and concise and gave really good examples. Moving on, now I, I did set this up ahead of time. Um, it's there was a bag that comes in there so you could store all the pieces in uh, I took it out to make it a little bit simpler these are the BBP tokens the big bad pig tokens there's uh, no difference for them uh, he'll also put these new tokens for the tallest building at the end of the game for the tallest green yellow and red buildings uh, they're not the player tokens so let's uh, take a quick look at the player tokens this game plays up to two to four so there are four colors Unfortunately, the four colors are the same as the three buildings. I'm not really sure why they did that as opposed to just having seven colors altogether. But I really love the art of this game. It reminds me of Cartoon Network and the aughts. You can kind of, you can't really see it in the video, but it has this look like you used marker to fill in the background. Looks fantastic. And this uh, level of quality for the art is spread throughout not only the tokens, but for the cards themselves. I was really, really impressed with this. Each player will receive uh, three, four, and five, as you can see here. And they're the same wolves for all three. So three little pigs, three little wolves. And naturally, no game is complete without a mustache. Uh, unfortunately, the mustache only plays a role in the two-player game, but that's fine. The original version came with this hard plastic mustache, but I can totally understand why they went for the cardboard because it's most likely cheaper. I do want to mention though that, like many Taiwanese board games, they use this white cardboard. It's very clean, and it just looks really, really nice. Um, a good benefit also is that everything comes out pre-punched, so you don't have to have any anxiety punching out components, and everything looks very clean and sharp and ready to go. And now we move on to the meat of the game, and that's the cards. Uh, the same level of quality uh, for the tokens is on the cards. Uh, you'll have three pig cards here. Uh, there's really no difference between them. and In fact, you'll shuffle them later on in the game. Uh, you'll pass your card right, pass your card left, and the last one there lets you put uh, a wolf into a house. It is kind of a shame that there are only three pig cards, but I, I really think the game could have benefited from more. If you live in Taiwan, or you're good at hunting, or go to a lot of conventions, you ought to get these two promo cards. That's uh, the two designers, that's Smooks Chen, and that's Pokey Chen, the artist. They uh, have the same last name, but they're not related. 
just a very common uh, name in Chinese. Smooks's ability is to everyone has to play a card, and Pokey's ability is everyone has to draw a card. And this uh, brings the pig count up to five. I really would like to have seen a little bit more uh, cards. That I can understand if they want to keep the cost down, have fewer cards. The Chinese is Sanji Xiaolang, which just means three little wolves. Uh, if you notice on the art though, everything's bright and colorful. Uh, there are a lot of subtleties in the design. So like the 11 has 11 uh, windows. Not actual windows, but panes. If you separate the panes out, uh, 4 and 10 also have 4 and 10 windows. They didn't have to do this level of detail, but I'm really glad they did because it shows the not only the subtleties in the design of the game, but also in the in the art direction itself. Uh, some cards can be flipped upside down. Um, some cards have special abilities on the top, but everything is very clear and very intuitive. And now you're ready to learn how to play the game. First thing you can do is you're going to take your pig cards and separate them out of your deck. Then you're going to take the rest of your building cards, give them a quick shuffle. I'm going to give them a lazy shuffle here. Then you're going to deal out five cards to each player. I'm going to set up for a four player game here. And after you deal out five cards to each player, you're going to give each player their three, four, five uh, wolf tokens. Once those cards are delivered to everybody else, you're going to take the top five cards from the deck. There we go. And you're going to take a random face down pig card and shovel that into those five, now six cards. You're going to place it on the bottom of the draw pile. And then you can take your two remaining pig cards and then shuffle them into the building deck. I'm just going to give it a quick lazy shuffle here and you can do a more thorough job than me. And just like that, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, I like to take the tallest building tiles and place them next to the draw deck just to give a nice friendly reminder of, of what we're all playing for. I'll also take the pig tokens and place them next to the draw pile as well for the exact same reason. You also want to put this at the center table within easy reach of everybody and leave a space to the right or left or wherever for a discard pile. And then that, you are ready to go. So on your turn, you'll have five cards in your hand and three wolves. Of course, you can look at your cards. And on your turn, you have one to two actions. You either play a card in front of you or discard a card. If you play a card in front of you, you just place it down, and you'll have three slots. I'm just going to show you really quickly ahead. One spot is for the red, one green, and then one for the yellow building. And naturally, you can put these in any order that you wish. There's a fourth suit, which is the white building. Uh, it's a wild, and you could use that on your green, yellow, or red buildings. You can even start off building white, but then later on you will have to determine which color it's going to be and it can only be a color of you know red yellow and green you can't have two yellows or you can't have two green buildings at all now to give you an idea of the of how to build uh, let's just look at the building cards here's one to fourteen of each of the four suits uh, four five and six are pretty simple like there's nothing too specific about them and when you build make sure that you want to put a higher number on top of a lower number. You can never put a lower number above a higher number. That's a big no-no because you're always counting up. Now the other uh, cards, one, two, and three, are a little special because I mean if you're lucky enough you could begin at one. However, you can also get one later on in the game and then put it underneath a higher card as a basement. So you have B1, uh, B2 and naturally you also have B3. I just I love the art. I love how the stairs go winding down. Uh, B3 has a circular emblem of a wolf and we'll talk about that later. 7, 8, and 9 are a little bit special. 7 has three houses there. That means that when it's at the very top it counts as three floors and not just one. It also has a negative two points so it'll be worth two points at the end of the game unless you cover it up. Uh, five or should I say 9 and 10 are very special because 9 can be 5 or 9 and 10 can be 4 or 10 so it adds a little bit of flexibility and gives you a little bit more uh, maneuverability as you play the game. Now 11 through 14 are the big end game cards. If you put these cards at the very top and they're there at the end of the game they'll also give you additional 3 or 2 points. 
Uh, 13 14 are the exact same. They both count as two floors as opposed to just one. Main difference is that 14 has a cute little bird at the very top. And you could possibly have a 14 story building. It's, I've never seen it happen, but you could do it. So back again to your hand, you can either play a card and then you draw a card. And then play will go around the table back to you. You'll play a card and draw a card. Very, very simple. Now, in addition, you will eventually will need to discard a card. And that's because you need to send one of your wolves to another player's building. So what you're gonna do is you can take a card from your hand, uh, put it in the discard pile, and then you will place your wolf in another building. You can't put it in your own, and you can't put it in an already occupied building. So let's put it here in the green, because it's unoccupied. However, if you notice the red building has B3, and that means that two wolves can live in that building. And once again, you can't live in your own building. Now, when you draw a card, eventually you will draw a pig card. And let's see what we got here. Oh, pig cards aren't that bad, actually. The first thing you'll do is you'll draw another card into your hand, so you have up to five. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take the pig tokens, and you'll take the lowest number, uh, two, first two, then three, then four. And starting from the player who drew the pig card, you're going to find the tallest building in the whole game regardless of color, and that's going to be the yellow building. So by the end of the game, it's when the third pig card is drawn, uh, you will destroy the shortest red, shortest green, and shortest yellow building. If there are any wolves or pigs living in that building, you'll flip all those tokens over, and then you will receive negative points for those. Any buildings that have a star up top will give you bonus points. Buildings that are still standing will give you four points. Demolished buildings will give you zero points. If your wolves are still alive, you'll get points for those. First and foremost, any game that comes with a fake mustache, all really matter, it gets a thumb up in my book. Uh, but if I had to give it a number, I would give it an eight. I would definitely suggest this in the appropriate setting, and it's gonna stay in my collection for a little while longer. If you'd like to know more about how I rate like a seven and a nine, uh, I'll put a link down below, and you could read about how I rate my games. Now, first and foremost, I want to say that the components for this game are just fantastic. The art is really, really great. Um, you may not have noticed in the little how-to video, but cards uh, 1 through 6 have like a morning sky. And a 7 through like 10, I have like this nice like evening. And then the really tall ones have almost night. So when you play the game, it almost feels like a whole day is passing. And it has this nice... Uh, subtle feel to the gameplay. I think the white cardboard looks great. I think the card site, well, isn't it the best? Uh, it definitely holds up really well, but the art on this game is phenomenal. It has this great like Cartoon Network SpongeBob look to it, and it's definitely approachable for a family. And th make no mistake, this, this is a family game. I don't think the game is perfect. What game is? I don't think this game is uh, perfect. There are some problems that I have with it. First and foremost, I don't think the scoring is intuitive enough in this game. I always have to go to the rule book and check everything out to make sure I got everything. In fact, I even made myself like a nice little cheat sheet that kind of reminds me of everything I need to do. Uh, personally for me though, I think that this game could have benefited uh, from a nice little score pad and putting it in here. And I understand that if they didn't want to do that because it cuts on cost, uh, but I think this game could have really benefited from it. And I think if Reggae Games is listening, I mean you're listening, right? Everyone listens to me. You definitely should include a score bed here, and I think it'll just make the game far more approachable and easier for all players. I mean, it's supposed to be a family game. Next is, I feel a little bit mixed about the pig abilities. I mean, pass card left, pass card right. I don't really feel like that affected the game. Forcing yourself to be placing a, a wolf like early on in the game uh, definitely affects the, <laughs> the play of the game. Um, the promo cards are great because you're forced to draw a card and you have six cards in your hand or you're forced to play a card and maybe you're down to four cards in hand. The game's a little bit tighter. And then uh, those passing left, passing right cards could have more of an effect in the game. I think that this game could have benefited from more pig cards. I think limiting yourself to three is kind of a little bit redundant. And I think hopefully if, uh, in the Renegade version, you can have like five, six, maybe like eight cards. And you can have a little bit more variety. Uh, the third complaint that I have is that he's in the rulebook as the big bad pig and you definitely think that, oh, well, I don't want the pig token in my home, but you want the pig token in your home. So by having the rules say that 
he's big and bad, it kind of messes with the player's logic. So he's bad, I don't want it, but then you do want it because you want him in the building so you can get more points. And the fourth thing I, I had a problem with was the, the two-player variant. And that's when you actually use the mustache. And that, using the mustache is not the problem. I just feel that there's like this third player that the players take turns controlling. I didn't really feel uh, like that, that tightness in the game. I wanted more of like a push-pull that you definitely get in the three and four player game. And that was kind of missing in the two player game. So I think like the two player version is, uh, it's a little weaker, but the three and the four player version of this game is fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this game at those higher player accounts, especially for the four players, because if you don't play your wolf, you have to wait for all three other players to play. And that deck gets really, really, thin really really fast and you're kind of wondering it's like do i have enough time do i have enough time do i have enough time to play my wolf maybe i do maybe i don't and you could feel that uh, internal tension but anyway it's easy to count cards you'll be looking at everyone's building and you'll be waiting for a certain card to play and you're like maybe i can wait maybe i can and you'll be looking and counting that is actually quite fun for me and i think the three and four player game definitely really get that and the two player game you're kind of not it's, it's there's no tension there but you definitely feel that for three and four overall i'm really impressed by how great the art is and how simple the design is uh one of the complaints that i've had for uh i guess asian board games in general is that sometimes the art is either way too stylized or just really really boring and underdeveloped and i know that art is expensive so i can i sympathize but I think you gotta really push it. And I think that Pokechen did a really great job uh, with the artwork of this game. Top notch stuff. Um, as for playability, I definitely don't, I really wouldn't recommend it at two, but I think three and four, it really sings. And it has like a nice little bit of tension and card accounting. And it has a nice approachable theme with it kind of reversed. And that's why I rated this an eight. <laughs> Thanks for watching the end of the video, guys. If you like what you see here and you want to see more videos from CardboardEast.com, uh, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Once again, my name's Jay. Thanks for watching.